What constitutes dominance? In other words, what truly makes a man dominant? A man who is aggressive in the bedroom, can he say that he's a dominant man because he's aggressive in the bedroom? He can pull hair, he can slap some ass, he can choke her, wrap his hand around her neck. Does that really make a man dominant? I don't think so. It's funny though, because when you talk to a man, the average man who says that he's dominant, and you ask him to explain what makes you dominant, more often than not, he's going to mention the bedroom. That's his go to. And I'm talking about black men here. We're talking about black men. Why is that? Why is it for a black man to say that he's dominant? He explains it by what he can do in the bedroom. Is that the only way black men can be dominant? We know that black men are physically strong. On average, you know, stronger than other races, right? Physically. But I think it takes more than a strong physique and sexual aggression in the bedroom to be dominant as a man. It just takes more than that, guys. And if that is your only qualifying factor that makes you think you are dominant, you're missing something. So I want to delve a little bit deeper in this video or in this audio recording. <laughs> Some of you guys just hate it when I only record my, my voice and don't show my face. But I like talking. And I, for me, it's not about you guys seeing me. But I get it. Some, sometimes you guys just want to see me. You want to see body language. I get it. But my body language really doesn't change, y'all. Like, y'all see, y'all watch my videos. My body language is pretty much the same in all of my videos. Like, it really doesn't change. Sometimes I just don't feel like being on camera. Sometimes I just feel like talking and expressing myself. So, hence why I make my audio recordings. But, guys... Guys, <laughs> to me as a black woman, like, it saddens me that black men do not know what it means to be dominant. And when I say black men, y'all, I'm not talking about all black men, because I know it's a good handful of y'all. Y'all don't even need to watch this or listen to this video, because you got it down pat. You know what it means to be dominant. But there are some... A good portion of, a good significant portion of you guys who have absolutely no idea what it means to be dominant because unfortunately your masculinity has been stripped from you. You are passive. You are a yes man. And you have adopted the contemporary ideologies of the American society, the system in which we live in. And not even aware that you've lost a sense of who you really are as a man. See, a lot of men think that to be gay or homosexual or emasculated means that, oh, you got to like men as a man. You got to you got to lose your manhood by having sex with a man. It's not always about sex, you guys. Men who have children that they do not take care of aren't men. When you forfeit the ability to take care of your child, to provide for your child, to be a 
father, you no longer carry the identity of being a man. You don't deserve the right to call yourself a man. You're just not. And I'm going to I'm going to step on some toes. I already see. I'm going to step on some toes here in this video and it's just unfortunate, but some things just got to be said. And a lot of men, they are blindsided. They have been whitewashed, not even realizing that you guys have become so Europeanized that you've lost a sense of the truth of what it means to be a man. And here I am as a woman who is still very much connected to her femininity. Talking to you guys. Trying to bring you back home because brothers, brothers, Y'all have lost it. And um, you listen to men talk, right? You listen to the traditional man. Or I can't I say modern man. Because traditional men, like I say, don't really need to listen to this video. But the modern man, it's all in your head and what you guys think. And you can tell that these men have lost a sense of masculinity. Just by listening to them talk, listening to them share their perspectives on certain things as it relates to the man and the woman. You ask men, what is the contribution in a relationship? How should the contribution be in a relationship between a man and a woman? And we're talking about financial contribution here. And a good number of men will say 50-50. I have a significant problem with that. How can you claim dominance? Man, how in the hell can you claim dominance? And... A relationship with a woman but you are dependent upon her financially you are dependent upon her financially you cannot even provide for her but yet you say you are dominant you can't even provide for your child most men can't even provide for their child. When I say men, I'm talking about within the black community. That's why so many black women are single mothers. And hence, we have child support. And I don't want to hear any excuses. Like, the shit is old. And you would think black men will get tired of saying, Oh, that bitch put me on child support. She went to the white man. But men who are doing what they're supposed to be doing, number one, you know who you are and you have retained your masculinity as a man. No excuses because some of y'all, y'all make too many excuses and y'all have been hoodwinked and sucked up into this matrix, not even realizing they got your ass. They got you. You look at your mind. Your mind is a reflection of what we see in music videos. When you listen to how rappers talk about women, black women, that's what you see when you're looking at a black man. It's a reflection. And then they go and they make excuses saying, oh, bitches ain't shit. It's a cycle. And women say, oh, niggas ain't shit. 
It's a repetitive cycle, but somewhere in this cycle, somebody has to be the bigger person and stop it. It's a cycle, meaning it's a, it's a, it's a circular causation. Where did it begin? Who knows? But somewhere it has to end. This problem has to end, you guys. Where you have men who abandon their families that they created. You fall in love with a woman. You have children. You disappear. She goes to the white man. Put you on child support. Now you say, oh, black women ain't shit. Then the black woman says, oh, niggas ain't shit. Then it becomes a narrative. And then this is just how generations to come treat each other based on this narrative that has been promoted in the media, perpetuated across different relationships. Somewhere... Somebody got to wake up and say, hold up, this is not the business here. Somewhere down the line, come on, somewhere down the line, somebody has to say, this is not how things should be. Women are expecting men to just be the man, take responsibility and just lead. How difficult can it be for a man to lead? Is it really that difficult for a black man to be the head of the household? To really be dominant? Is it really that difficult for a black man to do that in the society we live in? I mean, yes, we know there's about there's racial oppression, there's discrimination, there's an attack against the black man, the black woman, the family. The black man is being targeted by the system, probably at higher rates than the black woman. Yes, facts. However, can we really use that as a crutch to lean on? Because if so, that means that you take away the power from the black man and have given it to the white man. When will the black man reclaim his power? When will he live up to his true identity as God, as they say? The black man is God. When will that happen? And it's not all the black man's fault. We can't put the whole burden on the shoulder of the black man. Yes, the black woman is just as responsible Because if we are going to expect the black man to lead, then what does that mean? That means that the black woman then has to submit. But when you take a black woman who has been doing it by herself for so long, and ain't just talking about one generation of black women who have been independent black women. We're talking about generations upon generations. This is an epigenetic cycle. It has become embedded in the black woman's DNA to think that she really doesn't need a black man. She can be independent of the black man. Healing has to take place between the black man and the black woman. Somebody got to step up and say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. And honestly, I expect the black man to take the lead. To be the one to break the cycle. Yes, there's some work that needs to be done with the black woman. Because let's say the black man does step up, break the cycle, reclaim his dominance. Reclaim his identity. His masculinity. He finds a way to be financially free, financially stable. He has all the resources needed to survive 
and above survival to thrive and to be able to take care of not only himself, but a whole entire family if he so chooses, right? He has that ability to do that, no sweat. And he reaches out and he approaches a black woman and, you know, he solicits her attention, expresses interest in her. But yet this black woman is the typical independent black woman. She doesn't need a black man, but yet she needs a black man. You know, so there's going to be some friction there. We can expect to see friction. And when the friction happens, what do we do? Typically, obviously, what usually happens is they just say, fuck it. Fuck it. I've been single my for this long. The black man says, I've been single for this long. Fuck it. We'll just go our separate ways. Don't even bother working through the issues. How are we going to get anywhere if that continues to happen? The truth of the matter is the black man doesn't want to be a leader. The black man does not, a lot of black men just do not want to be dominant. They're okay with being beta males. Saying that, oh, the black woman is independent. She don't need us. Therefore, I don't need her. We see it. So what does a black man do? Go to another black man. Or go to a white woman. A non-black woman. That's what usually happens. Because the one thing about love and relationships. People aren't stupid. People deserve to be loved and appreciated and no man no black man deserves to be disrespected by a black woman who feels that she does not need a black man no black man deserves that and disrespect happens on so many different levels she don't even have to say it out her mouth that she doesn't respect him she can say it with her body language with her eyes, with the way she positions herself with respect to him, with her tone of voice, with the way she answers him or doesn't answer him. So no man deserves disrespect from the black woman at all. But a man should lead. And if we can get this modern day black man to find himself, to become dominant, he got to work on himself because it's one thing to say, okay, yeah, you're going to fall in love. You're going to take care of her. But you got to work on yourself first. You got to... Somehow find some resources, man. Because a lot of black men just lack resources. They don't have it like that. And it makes sense why they'll say, you know what? 50-50, man. We got to do this 50-50. 50-50 contribution financially. That's what I'm talking about. When I say 50-50, we're talking about financial contribution. A lot of black men say no. It ain't no, I'm going to pay all the bills. Because they look at that like, oh, she just want to use me. She's a gold digger. Because they don't have it like that. If a man had it like that, and he was truly a dominant man, it would be no question about what's the contribution. And it's not that a woman can't contribute, because women, we have our own income. Black women got money, sometimes making more money than the black man. But with the financial contribution and the distribution of finances in that relationship. 
attached to that is power, the power exchange. So when we're talking about dominance and submission, what we're really talking about is an exchange of power between the black man and the black woman. How much power exchange will you see in a relationship where a black woman is equally responsible for the bills in that household? The power dynamic is going to be equal. And you'll have some black woman say, oh no, I go half and half with my husband and I submit to him. No, you don't. No, you don't. You probably submit to each other. And that's a whole nother caveat to this whole dominant submission because the trick to submission, if a man truly wants a woman to submit to him, is that he has to submit. But it's called something different. It's called love, as the Bible refers to it. And I'm not a Christian or anything like that, but for people who watch or listen to this video, for you guys to understand where I'm coming from, even the Bible talks about that. That the men, men are supposed to love their wives, wives submit to your husband. So no, it's not that the man really is submitting, but love really is submission. When you want to break it down, but you just maybe not want to call it that because in your mind, the way we think about submission, it's almost as if it means lack less power and men are perceived to be more powerful, right, than women. So sometimes you can throw people for a loop when you use certain terminology and you attach certain words to men. It's like, no, man can't be submissive, right? Yes, men can be submissive, and that's really the key for a woman to submit. That a man first has to submit, a.k.a. love her. Demonstrate his love for her, which is submission. It's just in a different form. He does that first to her. He loves her. He provides for her. He takes care of her. That's what love is. He nurtures her. He makes her feel secure. When all of that is in place, a submission comes very easy. But when you have these women that are like, oh, you don't tell me what to do. Whatever. You can, you can, it's clear that you can see that a woman just don't have any kind of respect for a man. You got to go a little bit deeper and look at the dynamic between the man and the woman to understand why is that. Why do you see these single black mothers saying fuck these aka niggas quote unquote niggas why do you see that why do you see black women saying things like that there's a reason behind that you cannot have the black man without the black woman you can't have the black woman without the black man we are inseparable so what you see in the black woman is a reflection of what you see in the black man and vice versa. When the black man changes, the black woman will change. We're inseparable. So the black man, I'm going to go back to this question again. What makes you dominant? Oh, I'm the man. I'm just a man. That's what makes me dominant. I'm the man. <laughs> but you have men that can't even... Okay, so you're a man. What makes you a man? I'm just a man. I ain't got to explain myself. I'm just a man. Okay, because you have a penis? What makes you a man? Who told you you were a man? I'm just a man. That's all what I've always been. I've just been a man. No. You're not a man. You are a male, but you're not a man. 
You know what I mean? Until you're able to respect, love, and care for a woman. And have a family. That's what makes you a man. These males don't even respect women. But you say you're a man. You refer to the female creation as bitches. And hoes. And you say, oh, well, that's what they are. No, sweetie. No, we can do better than that. And that's the problem right there because the black man is not realizing that the black woman is a reflection of him. So whatever you call the black woman, you're saying that's who you are. We are one and the same. You speak negatively about the black woman, you're speaking negatively about yourself. Same thing for the black woman. We not let off the hook. But come on, black men. You have to stop making excuses, blaming the white men, blaming the system. Yes, we know that is true. Racism does exist. There are inequalities, racial inequalities that exist in our society. There is discrimination that exists. Black men are being targeted. Black men are being killed. Those are facts. But guess what? We got to pick up that cross. We got to pick up that burden. We got to keep going. We can't say that's an excuse to crumble. To fall, to give in, to fold. We cannot say that. We cannot use that as an excuse. For a black man to be less of a man. We have to fight through it. There are many black men who have fought through it. And they deserve the right to be called men. And they take care of their families. They make a family. They fall in love with the woman. They marry her. They have children. They take care of their family. They're committed to that relationship with their wife, their significant other. That's a man. See, we live in a society in America where you can be anything and do anything you want. And oh, no one can judge nobody because you can just do whatever you want to do. No consequences whatsoever. No. And it seems like the baby dad, the men who become baby daddies and don't take care of their children. And the media may seem like they're winning. Because, you know, you have the rappers. You have people who are um, public figures in the media that these people look up to, right? So you think that that's a cool thing to do. But no, they're struggling. They, are, they have problems, man. They're in a crisis. So we got to get back. Back to the question. What is dominance? Can you truly say you're a dominant man? No. You might be a beta male, but you're damn, damn sure ain't no dominant man. And that's, we just talked about dominance as it relates to a relationship between a man and a woman. I haven't even touched on dominance as it relates to where a black man is positioned in our society. Because perhaps that's why the black man can only claim dominance in the bedroom. And to me, that's sad. That's sad when you talk to a man and ask a man for me as a woman to be listening and hearing this from a man. Just y'all do your own survey. 
ask a black man. And don't let him listen to this video because they're going to get all the tips and tricks. Nope. I said, this is a cheat sheet right here. <laughs> he don't need to hear the cheat sheet. But for the men who haven't heard the cheat sheet or read the cheat sheet, you ask them, y'all, do your own, do your own experiment, do your own survey. Ask them, are you dominant? And most of them will probably say yeah. And ask them, what does that mean? I promise you, 99% of the time, they're going to mention something about sex. That's going to be the first thing that comes in their mouth, sex or bedroom, something of that nature. They can't even talk about their position in society. That they own the business. That they are able to provide for their family. They can't even talk about that. That they set the rules in their household. And we ain't even going to talk about ownership. I don't think y'all are ready for the real definition of dominance. We ain't gonna we gonna touch on that because y'all know me. I'm all into this whole power exchange. And sometimes, you know, it scares some people. It scares some people when we go there and really start to talk about what it means to be dominant. But yes, it does involve a power exchange. And for a man who is truly dominant, he owns. Not only cares for his wife, but he owns her. I'm just going to leave it off like that. You guys share your comments below.